Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And it's time for another daily dose of Dismal Disney, and it's really dismal today. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm actually very irritated by the whole thing. So we talked about the town hall meeting that uh, Nelson Peltz and Jay Rizzullo have posted, and they basically said, hey, we don't want Iger fired. They said nothing bad about Disney. Rizzullo said he worked with Bob Iger before. He never had any problems with Bob. And they said that the people on the board were smart people. And they never said anything nasty or bad, just so that there needs to be some changes made because right. they're falling behind. So Disney put out this new video that's like one of those political commercials you see during like an election where you're talking really bad crap about the person you're running against. Like, you know, did you know that they kick puppies and, you know, cost pink eye in a nursing home? And all this other crap. They you know? farked in the elevator they, at the they, Pop Century. Know, that's right. Yeah. It's like one of those, like, you know, where you really want to destroy your political yep. adversary yep. video. <laughs> that's what Disney released. Like, that's how low Disney went. So first we had the Ludwig von Drake video with nostalgia, nostalgia, nostalgia. And then we got the grandkids of Roy and Walt out doing, you know, trying to damage control for them. After they spent how many years attacking the Disney company? Right, themselves. at least Abigail. Yeah, and now yeah. their newest one, after the town hall meeting from Nelson Peltz and Jay Rizzullo, where they were just basically saying, "Here's what we want to change," but we don't, we don't, we're not going to speak poorly of Bob Iger or the board. Disney puts out this video we're going to show you, and people are like, "Why are you surprised by this?" It's like because I, we have worked around Disney for years. We have been covering this crap for years. We've been the mar seen the marketing stuff for years. We aren't just like people just showed up because it's trendy to talk about it on YouTube because I want to make money, you know? We've yeah. been talking about this. This is like where we came from. Years of this stuff. Never ever expected Disney to publicly go this far. It's yeah. really, really crap. Yeah, no matter how low you think Disney can go, they always surprise you. They can always go lower. I know, I just didn't think they would go this far. I mean, Disney, the, the, the especially the family, you know, company the you know, they're for the, you, you, they're, 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 they're above everybody and they're like what's right and what's good. And not that they are. I'm the same, that's why they always present themselves. Uh, and then they went this, they went here. Well, when the chips are down, we see what they really are. That's right? what this is. That's yeah. This is desperation. And yep. when someone cho shows you who they truly are, believe them. So before we get into it any further. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, you get woohoo if you do. Woohoo! So Geeky has been looking into this one. She's going to lead this one. Uh, I saw a little bit of this commercial. and it, Yeah, it's a political ad. It literally is a political Her ad. Her daughter was even like, wait, what? Because she couldn't even believe it. That She was like, they went that far? They did. So we're going to watch this video, guys, because it is absolutely ridiculous. We'll keep breaking it here and there uh, to add commentary. What's the harm of letting activist investor Nelson Peltz or Jay Rizzullo have a seat on Disney's board? Oh my God, it's the, the voice. Is it is. It's the it's literal the voice. voice and the music. If they succeed, Disney oh could suffer God. the same fate as other great companies that Peltz has previously infiltrated, <laughs> such as GE and DuPont. Wait, but I want to make sure I take a stop it right here for a second, because Bob Iger left Disney and sold a bunch of his shares and then piled a whole shit ton of money into Funko. Yeah. Funko. Funko, um, and that was in May of 2022. He's going to be advisor. He's an advisor to Funko's board. He's not on their board, but he's an advisor. In May, of their, their their stock was, you know, to here, and it went up a little bit. But then right after that, it went from at the peak being uh, like $26 a share mm. down to it is now currently at $6.52. Oh, my God. But after Bob Iger was, came in as an advisor, it plummeted down to like 7 or $8 a share, less than $8 a share, and it just progressively has gotten worse. And that says Bob Iger has become an advisor to the Funko board, right? That's I also crazy. I also want to point out that Disney's in the shithole it's in because of choices made by Bob Iger and the current board. I'm not saying that, you know, Peltz and Rizzullo are, you know, were able to fix every company ever, or Peltz anyway. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is when they did their town hall meeting, which was here, we talked about it, they presented it as a friendly, they answered questions, they never spoke ill of the board or Bob Iger. OK, yeah, they were actually pretty classy. And uh, Jay Rizzullo was even like, yeah, I just don't know these new board members. I've reached out to them. They won't get back to me. I'm like, well, they're probably writing a script for this. This uh, Wait, hit yeah. piece. it gets worse. But 
Disney just did everything they accused Tryon of doing with this video. Yeah. Nelson Peltz has a long history of attacking companies to the ultimate detriment of shareholder value. They turn them on black His and quest white. also seems more about vanity than a belief in Disney. That's actually not true. If you listen to his town hall meeting, which we talked about, he talked about how he's been going to Disney parks for years. He goes to see all the Disney movies, and he doesn't like where Disney's gone. Yeah. I'm yeah. just, I'm just saying. <sighs> so anyway, let's continue on this, this, this awful political esque piece of propaganda bullshit Disney put out. Why else would he sell 500,000 Disney shares over the past six months in the middle of his proxy fight? Well, he's still at 500,000 shares that he sold. He still has more stock than anyone pretty much to control of. Yep. And, and, and meanwhile, the Disney shareholder or Disney board themselves don't own stock. I don't own very much. Yeah, so like he's still got what, like thirty three million shares but or some ridiculous. Yeah, amount. and he's controlling for Perlmutter, like, which they go to Perlmutter in a minute. Yeah, but again, yeah. the current Disney board doesn't have jack shit in stock of Disney, and they're mad because he well he sold five hundred thousand shares in his proxy battle. He still has enough to start a proxy battle, and beyond that, again. Most of the people on the board don't have much of anything in no. Disney stock. So no. unlike and Disney and CEO Iger sold a bunch of his to go destroy Funko. I'm like, really? God, Disney, you're so much better than this. Wendy's. Okay. Plus, he has no media expertise and no experience in running a global entertainment company powered by creativity. He's not going to be running it. He's not. He's got more experience running companies than the people they have on the board. I know. And the thing God. is, he he said he didn't have a lot of experience in this. No, in this that's why he brought he Jay Rizzullo with him. Yes, the company of creativity. Let's talk about Disney's creativity, shall we? Disney's creativity has been shit, which is why the company is in the hole it's in. The last several movies have been more about pushing agenda than they have about being good films. They've all, for the most part, either barely broke even or failed terribly at the box office the stuff they're putting on disney plus is laughed out of everything like like pinocchio live action peter pan and wendy that awful home alone movie all this stuff they keep putting on their stuff for the most part there's some good ones but for the most part it's been dog shit they have not let the, the people in imagineering do their job they had that president they brought in that just that just got gone in quotes and her answer was to make everything look like corporate lounges they took the yeah, disney out of disney weird. The, the creativity. You haven't let your own people be creative. What the fuck? And what are we giving for creativity? Let's look. Moana 2, Frozen 3, Toy Story 5. <laughs> and they said that Moana 2, Iger just pulled that one out of his ass because he went and heard it. Like, hurry, we got to make this into a movie because Moana was streamed a lot and people like it. Mm. Creativity. Coming from Iger, his, his idea of creativity is to just buy shit that other people were creative with and then ruin it because you have no idea how, how to, to be creative yourself. God. They said I have no media experience. I don't claim to have any. But he was honest. He said he didn't have any. Yeah. Oh, yeah. now, here's where they go after Rizzullo. Remember, Rizzullo said nothing negative about them. He said, I don't know the board members. I have nothing against them. I have no animosity towards them. They weren't there when I was there. Bob Iger was there when I was there. And Bob and I never had a crossword and the whole time we were together. And I have no problem working with Bob Iger. Remember that? Yeah, and he, he's he got almost as much experience at Disney as, as Bob Iger. And, and yeah, he left on pretty good terms. And now they're there. So this is how Disney treats their own. Yes, like, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. This is how they're, I mean, they're going to make, they're gonna make digs at pelts. Okay. But now one of their own Disney family members who had nothing but nice things to say about them. This is their comeback. Ready for this? And then there's Jay Rizzullo, a former Disney employee who was passed over for a promotion nearly a decade ago. Not for, not Disney family member, but employee. Just this an how, employee. This is yeah. what Disney thinks of you people yes. when yep. you're no longer with them or when you're uh, you're in their way, like with the, the layoffs during the pandemic. You are no longer family. You are no longer a cast member. You're just an employee now. Mm -hmm. God, this pisses me off. He hasn't been employed since leaving Disney. And the last time he joined the board of... Yeah, but I don't think he needs to be. I think he retired. He hasn't been employed since leaving Disney. But <sighs> if he left and he was old to retire then he and he had enough money, he doesn't have to be employed. 
So they're showing his iHeart stock. Okay, let's let's see this because Disney stock has taken a massive hit too. Guys. Oh, I know, I love that. They're jo- talking about the, the yeah. you know how we have to make sure Disney stock doesn't fail, but it's failed under Iger. The media company, the stock tanked. Oh, you mean like Disney stock? You mean you mean you mean like Disney stock? Yeah, I mean if you want to go there, they've actually had you know one of the biggest losses in like ten or fifteen years in the last twelve months. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but you know, you know, you know, whatever, you know, keep throwing that shit. What's more, Peltz and Rizzullo have teamed up with another disgruntled former employee, Ike Perlmutter, who has. <laughs> disgruntled former employee. The guy owned Marvel. Like. Well, but beyond that, they keep saying this, but let's look at the facts. The facts are he was at Marvel. He sided with Peltz. In 2023, Peltz decided not to pursue a proxy war then. And as soon as Peltz withdrew, because Perlmutter sided with Peltz, the first one of the first things Bob Iger did was fire Perlmutter. Yep. And they keep going on about how they're after a vendetta because of getting fired, but they never mentioned the fact that, uh, that Iger did it as a vendetta to begin with. Because he was pissed that, that, I, that Perlmutter kept like saying, your movies are going to suck. Oh, look, they sucked. And you were pissed that he sided with the pelts. <laughs> and, but, oh, the, he had, because well, they sided with him and he has a grudge. I'm like, Iger had one first. Yeah. I mean, and this is kind of somebody who isn't like, who never, doesn't think like, Perlmutter was always the greatest thing ever. This is, uh, yeah, this is reaching. This is really reaching. Sorry. His own lengthy record of destructive behavior inside Disney. Perlmutter has a well-documented grudge with Disney CEO Bob Iger. And Iger has a well-documented grudge against Perlmutter. And apparently against Jay Rizzullo, who had nothing but positive things to say about Iger. No, I, I think what's going on is Iger is afraid Rizzullo is going to get in there and take his job. But this is coming from the same Iger that's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to leave in 2026. Is he? I don't think he is. I don't think he has any intention of leaving. Uh, Peltz and Rizzullo made it very clear that they have no desire to fire Bob Iger, but they do want a succession plan. And they do want something cut. And, and he's been here all this time. And there was no succession plan. Instead, he got a, he got an extension. And they're like, he's not leaving. He's he is. You can pretty much point back the decline of the Disney company to choices Bob Iger made. Yeah. Well, it's it's Bob Palpatine. Yeah. Well, yeah. He's, he's gonna make sure he never leaves. He's gonna get emergency powers. But I'm and saying, he's gonna you stay can, in you office can forever. Trace back most everything that has currently crumbled the Walt Disney Company back to Bob Iger. He come. They bring him back. And then he's supposed to be able to be there temporarily and he gets himself an extension. And he has no succession plan for leaving. There's, you never heard anything about it, right? So mm-hmm. I don't know. It's just fuck them. I mean, I'm sorry I said that. I never thought people are like, why are you so surprised? Because trust me, Disney doesn't usually, be, they behave this way, I'm sure, behind the scenes. But publicly, this is like a whole new level of low. That I didn't think they'd go this low. Oh, the mask is, is definitely slipping off. Desperation. Yeah. This sort of personal animus in the boardroom is more than disruptive. It can be destructive. Yes, <laughs> it is. That's why Bob Iger had a problem with Perlmutter and fired him. Destructive. Can you destroy the company any more than Iger and the board have already done so? Seriously, can you? Because they've already run it into the ground. I just, I can't even, this makes my head hurt. Especially at this critical time when despite all of these distractions, Bob Iger and his management team have engineered an ambitious plan to build Disney's future. Okay. 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 This is, this is some grade A bullshit because there is no plan. There is no plan. Look at what Universal is doing and compare it to what, what Disney is doing. Well, they're showing the, 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 the Zootopia area that was added to, I think was it Shanghai? And they're like, oh, my God, guys, good news. Disney's going to do a secret project they're in development for, maybe possibly for Shanghai. Shanghai, who just got a Zootopia land. And we have Hong Kong that just got stuff. They, they, all these foreign parks are getting stuff. They're yeah. not bringing it over here. Yeah, Here's where they have a threat. This is, this is what makes me kind of angry is that, like, Walt Disney World especially should be home base. It should be where all the innovation goes. You know? At least Disneyland. Or di- at least Disneyland. They, they should keep the innovation stateside, but they keep giving their best ideas to mm-hmm. the overseas parks. No, no, no. No, what's going on is in Shanghai and Hong Kong, it's not owned by Disney. They're, yeah. They, they're, it's, like, it's almost like a licensing agreement, but they don't, they don't own the whole thing. So what's going on over there is 
They can foot the bill. They can do all the research and development. They can spend all the money and then Disney will just clone it for over here and then they don't have to spend the money and the time. Well, it's like the Tron coaster came out like, what, damn near a decade after it was yeah. <laughs> it was launched in Shanghai? Yeah, exactly. So yeah. they're going to just do, they're just going to clone the shit from over there over here. Meanwhile, what are you hearing about for like Disneyland? They're trying to get an expansion, you know, approved. Disney World, you're only hearing about reskins and rethemes for the most part. But why Why would that be? Disney World's one that's going to face Epic Universe soon. That's the place they should be putting a lot of their attention Yes. In, right? Well, here's the thing. Before, when they owned Reedy Creek, they could just push stuff through and get away with it and do what they wanted. But now that there is the Central Florida Tourism Oversight District, they have to jump through hoops and go through channels like everyone else. And the problem is that maybe it wasn't probably the best idea to start pressing charge or lawsuits against them and trying to, you know, fight them at every turn because now when they need them to be on their side, they're not going to side with them. No. It's pretty stupid. So before they just green light shit because they could, now they're just doing reskins for the most part of things and then promising stuff that we don't even know if they can do because it has to go through the channels first. But yes, yes, they're all about development. Again, let me remind you, for Walt Disney World, what they've announced is... Uh, Splash Mountain, which they announced way before, it's yep. a reskin. They're supposed to be reskinning a test track someday, possibly, maybe, but you never heard anything else about it. Uh, they're going to turn that, that Dino Land USA into this other area that's going to be like, you know, Canto themed, and they're going to turn Dinosaur into Indiana Jones, which they have over Disneyland already. Someday. You just saw, you saw Blue Sky Art, and that's all you've seen. Yeah. It's a bunch of just, oh, they're going to bring the theater back for the Little Mermaid that they already owned, and they're just, you know, updating the theater. Yeah, it's almost like whatever they can do that doesn't require a bunch of permits to expand the land or anything. You know what I'm saying? But Disneyland, even, they're talking they're going to put Avatar in. Oh, but uh, they walked that back even on their materials. He said Avatar Land. They're saying an experience. They oh refuse to say land in the materials. So I'm just saying, this is a load of shit. It's razzle-dazzle bullshit. The company for a new era of sustained growth and value creation. Again, all the cruise ships that are, they have coming out, they were in production for years. They were in production for before the pandemic, except for the one they bought, quote unquote, on the cheap from a place that almost had it completely d d done anyway. I think that's going to be the treasure. And whatever. The last thing that we need right now is to be distracted. That's all you've been doing for the last five years. Politics. And yeah, but yeah, Iger's busy trying to run for office. It's like, come on. In terms of our time, our energy, by an activist or activist. Okay, again, <laughs> last year they got a reprieve. Did they fix anything? No, not really. I think I think they got a reprieve, and they, and Pelz was like, hey, we'll just we'll hang back for a year. We'll give you enough rope to hang yourself with. Oh, look, you had like five box office bombs in a row. Okay. Oh, they fired a bunch of people. And they fired a bunch. Of, yeah, they're still firing people. They they fired what's her name from Imagineering. Oh well, we don't know that she. Was oh, fired. she got fired. She but totally got fired. They're replacing her with the guy that people were excited came back. Yes, they totally got rid of her. I, or, or they made it so uncomfortable for her that she left on her own. That's usually how corporations fire people without actually firing them, is they make it so ridiculously hard for people to do their job, and they belittle them until they just leave on their own. Nah, -uh, uh, uh, they're they're about oh. creativity. Oh, okay. Until 2024, they expect cash flow to exceed initial projections and have set a target of $3 billion in stock repurchase. That they announced after they had their backs against the wall. They yeah. didn't give the stock buybacks. They didn't give dividends for years, even when they could. And well, even though Peltz argues now they probably shouldn't be doing it either because they don't really, the company's kind of not in a good place. They're doing it now to try to get people to vote for them. They literally pulled this stuff out of their ass in February. The board also declared a cash dividend of 45 cents per share. Again, in February, when they were like, shit, we're, we're in trouble. An increase of 50% versus the last dividend paid. Again, because they're trying to get you to vote them back in. Yep. After a year of significant fixing that made way for a new era of building for growth, the Walt Disney Company has turned a corner and is focused on creating lasting long-term value. How are you going to do that? Your parks, uh, we did a, I did a video. Your parks are like, the inflation is so high that in some cases it's 90 some percent higher than it was 10 years ago. Oh, yeah, yeah. For the parks. It's at least 50% if you average it, at least more than it was 10 years ago at the parks. 
How are you going to fix it? They, Rizzullo and Pouts brought the fact that Disney brought in more money than anyone at the streaming services, but they only had a 7% margin because they are so bloated and overspent that they're like getting like, that's like a third of what, you know, Netflix has, but they made, you know, $20 billion more than Netflix. Mm. Where, 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 where are you? Where's innovation? You're going to, oh, you're going to, you're going to go to Epic Games. I know, right? Like, what the hell? Like, Fortnite, you're on the other side of it now. You needed to do this. If you were going to do the Fortnite thing, you needed to do it like four or five years ago. Right. This value is reflected in the recent stock performance, improved operating income, as well as the strategic. The recent stock performance. Re very recent. Recent. As in, as since February when they had made a couple announcements recently. And and actually, the stock could be going up because people are excited about the possibility of Pelts and Rizzullo joining the, the board. The stock didn't even go over $100 until, uh, so, like, yeah, the end of January, early February when they made the announcements they were making. Yeah. That's when the stock jumped up. to it was, It's been in the gutter. It was actually even back in 2022 it was higher, you know, before Iger came back. Mm -hmm. I'm just I'm just pointing that out. The stock has been under, far under what it was, even just a couple of years ago. But yes, yes, do go on, Disney. Do go on. Moves recently made by the company, what moves? such as the collaboration and equity stake in Epic Games, the upcoming release of yeah. Moana Two. Everything they pulled out of their ass. Taylor Swift's The Eras Tour coming to Disney Plus and more. The Disney board is always open to good ideas. From no, 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 no. no. Go ahead. You have something you want to say? Uh, yeah. All the people that had good ideas got pushed out of the company one way or another. We're open to left. good ideas. Yeah. No, they're not. They're not open to good ideas. We're in a place where it's not just one activist investor group, even though they're only ever mentioning Pelts and Brazilo. Yeah. We also had Blackwell Capital, who's going after them in a proxy battle. We also have the fact that Value Act went after them as well, but they made a uh, they made a uh, a little saddle up deal where they get you know. They get to advise and get you know in, information before other shareholders do, which I still don't see how that's allowed. But three groups had to come out because they said that this place is is failing and something needs to be changed. But they I, listen. I, what, what gets me too is that they're when they're saying this, they're they're using Yoda. You you like we're wise. Yeah, but you you bought Yoda off of George Lucas and you screwed him over, and now you've got a moron. And that was Iger Lucasville. directly. Yeah, it was Iger directly stabbed George, and he admitted to it in his book. He stabbed George Lucas in the back. So I'm like, how dare you use Yoda of all of all the stuff that you've bought? No, no, no. This, this is pretty much. This, this, I think this is actually perfect. It sums up exactly what Iger has done. I think this is a perfect example. I remind everybody that they they fucked over George Lucas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What kind of person? All he does is acquire. He can, and, yeah. and then mismanage. Gage shareholders, but a quick glance at Peltz's white paper will reveal a surprising number of questionable proposals. Actually, no, he had a lot of really good ideas and made a lot of sense. The the core of the white paper, the 130 page white paper, was Disney needs to get back in the business of being creative, stop being distracted with politics, focus on making new IP, uh, focus on their theme parks because <laughs> they're going to get their their lunch eaten by Universal. Disney needs to stop being disruptive and distractive. Yeah, pretty much. That's basically what they were saying. That reinforces clear lack of experience in media. Not Again, most of their board members have no lack, have no experience in media. They lack no. experience in media. To mention a little oh, look, there's Mickey and, 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 and Walt. And quite a few proposals that Disney is already implementing. Nelson Peltz and Jay Rizzullo threatened to jeopardize the incredible oh, progress bullshit. that... Dead we're, we're trying. We really are. No, not not trying. Not trying like trying partners, but like we're trying. We're trying to give the impression to shareholders that we know what the fuck we're doing. But it's very obvious to anyone who's been watching Disney over the last five years that the current board, the current leadership doesn't know what the fuck they're doing. Mm -hmm. Very obvious. The company has made since Bob returned as CEO at this critical moment. That Bob has returned to CEO of the company. When Bob returned, their stock dropped further. He wasn't gone that long. He was gone what, like two years? I don't. He was still around, but he wasn't like you he know, was yeah. still around. He was he he literally is Palpatine. He was the Phantom Menace. He was actually pulling the strings, probably from behind the scenes, 
and it was Bob Iger not being able to let go that probably tanked whatever chance Chapek had. Exactly. And he's not going to let go now either. That's no. the point. He's not going to leave office. You're going to have to boot this motherfucker out of office. That's the only way he's going to go. We simply cannot. Oh, now the distant happen. fireworks. The choice is clear. The choice is clear. Vote blue. Vote blue, yeah. Vote Disney. Don't vote Disney. Disney, what has Disney done? Disney has led us to a bunch of agenda-driven political bullshit masquerading as movies. Disney has uh, got them, they got themselves in a position. They lost Reedy Creek at Walt Disney World. And yeah, there are right? legal I mean, battles with Florida. Yeah, I mean, again, this is all unnecessary, distracting drama. They're, they need to be focusing on making the best movies they can make. They've, they've gotten their asses kicked on every level. Theme parks, animation, uh, live action movies like freaking Oppenheimer and Barbie. Right. You because know? they didn't have their, their box office was nothing but fail yeah. last year, except for yeah. like a couple that, you know, like Guardians of the Galaxy and the end of a the Avatar run. The rest of it was just fail across the board. Well, that's because they had individual creators that still had some creative control. You had James Gunn in charge yes, of Guardians. Yes, exactly. And, and you had, um, uh, James Cameron in charge of Avatar. So, you know, so when James is in charge. <laughs> yeah. It's to put another. Yeah. But, but I'm just like, yeah, but I'm just saying, like, you actually let people who know what the hell they're doing do their thing. Again, key point being know what the hell they're doing. You let them do their thing and step away. They're they're fine. But they, they put other people in charge that don't know what the hell they're doing. It could be argued very Successfully, I think that they put people that have no media or, or cinema, cinematic experience in charge of their movies, and and this is why we're in the place that we're in right now. They were clearly choosing people by different qualifications than yeah. I would have chosen them by, and it shows. Um, then you have the whole situation like Bob Iger is going to show you. I'm going to show you what's what. I'm going to put all my money into Funko. Funko. And That's then what run the kids it, are talking about. Run it down about. to six to oh to six dollars and something. What was the lowest in the in the last in the last year? I don't even know. Was this is Funko trading at fifty percent discount? Oh my god. Yes. That so, was two days ago. So yeah, that's with Iger being an advisor. Look, Iger's the advisor. Whoop. Yeah, because he's doing a great job. I mean, we can play this this point in the fingers all day. I'm so tired. I guess what makes me so mad was, you know, I might have been like, okay, maybe they have they're getting enough pushback that they're actually gonna be scared shitless and do something. Yeah. But then they put out this, and I'm just like, I am so surprised they publicly went this low. Uh, I'm not. I mean, uh, I am by the this whole uh, beginning with the political type ad. It's like. It's the antithesis of what you probably should have done. And you look really, really bad considering how these guys are selling nice things about you just last week. Jay Rizzullo is old school Disney. Bob Iger is a completely different breed. The company has changed since Bob Iger has, has come in and not for the better. It's become more corporate. I mean, even looking like I, I knew there was a difference within the Disney blogosphere when they had their PR people going after WDW News Today. That's true. But now WDW News Today has uh, media access again. And now suddenly oh, they're, they're desperate. Like, they're desperate. And now they're, they're like, yeah, every... Disney's great. Yeah. Um, well. You know, here's the thing, too. Jay Rizzullo kept quoting Disney and saying about how Disney was principles were core to what when he was there. Bob Iger just talks about himself. Yeah. Uh, unless they want to bring up the Disney magic and stuff in their video at the end. Like, because if you believe in Disney and it's all like the Disney, the, their Disney stuff. The Bob. Mandalorian, yeah. you know, Planet of the Apes. They had Deadpool flashing in there. Again, things, none of these things they created. That's the, you know what I'm saying? And the thing, the thing about Iger that gets me is that you listen to this guy talk. He's got a bigger ego than Walt Disney had. And he, honest to God, thinks he's like the second, co he thinks he is Disney. That's, mm -hmm. that's the problem. Like Disney culture prior to Bob Iger was you were part of something great. It's about, uh, Walt's legacy and continuing Walt's legacy. And and you don't hear Bob Iger talk a lot about Walt Disney. You hear him talk about Bob, the, Iger? Bob Iger and the current year Disney company that in his mind that he built. Well, and he that's did two books about how great he was. Yeah. He and two books about him kissing his own ass. Yeah. I mean, this guy has deluded himself into thinking that he created the Walt Disney company. 
And the thing is, a lot of his choices have been what led the company to where it was. His yeah. overspending on Fox, his acquisition of Marvel and Star Wars, Pixar, they all could have been great things. And they were, and, and they started out good, at least for Marvel and Pixar, while they still had projects in play that were already planned. But as soon as those ran out and they had to, to use people, you know, and their new ideas and they had to rely on themselves, they ran them into the ground. Oh, yeah. Star Wars, other than, um, than uh, Rogue One, pretty much have just run themselves into the ground. The yeah. Mandalorian, they even had a bright spot with that, and they found a way to run it into the ground. Does seem to happen very often with them, yeah. I, I'm just saying. This is just, I mean, this is just so bizarre. It's just, it, it clearly is a political hit piece. I can't believe they even got the, the voice guy from the political ads to do it like, I just, I, Nelson I heard, Peltz kicks puppies. When I saw this, I just, I, just, I was like, I... Everything they accused Tryon of, they just did with this video. Everything. And, it's yeah. that, and I'm just like, wait a minute. You're, and all it says to me is Disney is desperate. Yep. Oh, yeah. So that's 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 it. Disney is desperate. They've hit a new low. We're going to see things ramp up. I mean, the fact that this is happening like every week and it's getting more and more intense leading up until April was April 3rd. Tells yeah. me we ain't seen nothing yet. I'm and waiting for the final push. The diehards. The diehards are going to vote Disney anyway. The ones yeah. they're going to vote Disney back in. Disney will probably still win because apparently you can buy votes now, and I'm sure they are. And then their their diehards aren't going to look they're like the white paper said because we said so. But if you actually take the time to go look at what it actually says, it's not what they said. But people aren't going to take the time. And they know that. So we're just going to play the razzle dazzle, um, and, and we're going to show them nostalgia shit and know that a bunch of your pixie dusters are going to eat it up, and just let us stay as it is. And it's going to be more bullshit is what it's going to be because they're not going to unless unless they're pushed to do something they don't do anything that is true so we're going to wrap this up yes all right please subscribe for more pop culture news views rants and dismal disney news guys we'll talk later bye